well, you know what it is. It's Valentine's Day. And I want to scream. I'm not kidding. Look what is going on. Gary gets me some M&Ms for Valentine's Day. Does he just buy a bag? No, he doesn't. He bought a tube. And you know me. I'm going to do something if I've got a tube. But look at this. I literally just made it. I put it out in seconds. And not only one, but they started to fight over it. I mean, this Hummingbird feeder cost me, well, it cost me nothing because it was a gift, but what does it cost? A dollar to buy this. And now we've got the most unique, fun hummingbird feeder we can put out there for the hummingbirds to enjoy. And it's so unique. And you know what? Any of you can make it. I'm going to show you how I did it, even my trials and errors, but I got it right and you can get it right now with just a little bit of DIY. So this is my newest hummingbird feeder I made, and this has been a blast, but it's only been out a couple days. I'm already thinking of new modifications for it, but let's get into how I put that one together, and then I'll have some last minute thoughts on it, and I'll be waiting for your ideas too. So here it is. This is the Valentine's Day M&M container, but they do make them all year different shapes, so keep that in mind. You can get tubed candy, and you can do the same thing with other types of containers. Now, you just take the label off, and that's all there is to it right now. You could use a hair dryer to peel it off if it doesn't come off, but get the candy out quick, because otherwise you'll melt it, and of course you want to eat it. But don't share this with the hummingbirds. It's got red dye. Remember, candy is never to be given to hummingbirds, just sugar, white granulated sugar. Now here I use plain old, it's kind of like a yarn string. I liked it, it's different colors, it's strong. And I wrapped it around one end and I tied it in knots and then I trimmed it. Now make it longer than you need because you can trim it later. Now here I'm gonna do it a little different on the other end. Notice I wrapped it around the tube end but on the heart-shaped one, I'm going to make two holes with my soldering iron. Right now, you'll see that I'm gonna make a hole on one side towards the top. You don't want your nectar to run out. You'll see as we go. And then I used the skinny wire I had, like a needle, so I could put my string on there and pull it through. Now, if you've got an embroidery needle, you can use that too. I just had the wire there. So now I've got my string through it. It's nice and secure. That's why I like doing it this way instead of wrapping it around the heart. And now you're just gonna tie it in knots. So this way the string is secure. So when we hang it, it's not gonna swing all over. And this way, once you hang it, it will be nice and straight. Now, the suction on this is not that tight. Now, you can use painter's tape, which I use on a lot of my fountains, but it just so happens I have red duct tape. I'm gonna take a piece off, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make that fitting there where the heart fits into the tube a little bit snugger. Is that a word, snugger? And it's gonna be tight. Now, my nectar is going to stay in there it possibly would leak if I didn't make the fitting a little bit tighter. You could use plumber's tape if you've got it. Now we're going to make the feeder holes and you want to make sure they're nice and straight. You don't want them all over. You can't have them on the top and on the side. It won't work. Now I'm going to put a line here so I know when I open that up and clean it, it always goes back to that line. And now I'm going to follow that line with a straight line where I'm going to make my holes. Now here I'm going to use a hot soldering iron and we're going to go through and make the holes small. Remember their beaks are tiny and we're just going to go all the way across and that's it. Now there's one other thing I'm going to do but you're going to see a different change later is I'm using a sharpie to circle the holes and it works. I use it on my dots and the hummingbirds see it and they come and feed out of it but I've got a better way because like I said I progressed as I put this together. This is the first one I made and as you go you think gee I could do it better and you're going to get the better version as we go along but I was really excited with the first one because it's working fantastic. Now I use plain old wire. If you've got an old hook from an old feeder go ahead and use it because you know hummingbird feeders sometimes the plastic ones break and I always save the hooks but I made it from a wire I had here this is rebar wire I use in the garden made a hook and now I'm just tying my string onto the wire and I'm going to make sure it hangs straight that's important but you know what you can always adjust it as you go along or when you hang it outside and that's all there is to it now you're going to see a couple more things I decided to do that would work better and easier. I'm gonna make a hole on the top of the heart. This is the part 
that's going to be hanging upwards. Now you can make the hole big enough to use a funnel like I just showed or you can just pour it in with a cup. You'll see. But you're going to put your nectar in that way. Why? Because you can't pull the top out, pour it in, and close it up. It doesn't work. And when my old $1 feeders break, I saved the flowers. So I made a hole a little bit bigger here just to add a flower on. So if you've got those Dollar Tree feeders or 99 cent store feeders and they break, grab the flowers and hold on to them. Now here I just took a piece of sponge or foam and that's my cork. Isn't that something? So that's going to cork up the big hole so you won't get any bees or anything in it. And then at the end, because it wasn't open, we've got to open that up. So make a really big hole because when we put our nectar in there, we want to make sure it's going to flow through the tube. So get that opened where the heart is. And you'll see as you go. It's really easy to understand. Just make sure that you've got a nice big hole. And now when you put it on, it's so easy to fill up. I actually just took that little cork out and I filled it up using a measuring cup with a nice little spout on it. And that's all there was to it. And I hung it outside as soon as I was done. Of course, you want to wash it. But let me tell you something. I went back and decided to add on my own flowers using puffy paint. This is fabric paint. I use it all the time on my fountains and hummingbird feeders and dots. It's great. It just hangs on to the plastic so good. And it's so easy to use and it's non-toxic. So don't worry about it. Now, all you have to do is get a little creative. And you know what? They only cost about a dollar. I get mine at Walmart, but you can get them anywhere. And there you go. All the way around each hole. And you can shape it into a flower. So you don't need to worry if you've got old flowers from old feeders. You start fresh. And the hummingbirds recognize it. But I will tell you that they do see the holes, whether the flowers are there or not. But you know what? It looks nice. And they'll find it faster that way. Now tell me. Is that not cute? Just think, if somebody gets you some Valentine's Day candy, you'll end up with a hummingbird feeder. I love this. I'm so glad I thought of it. So easy to hang outside just from any hook you've got. Just make sure it's level. But isn't that something? I mean, it's just so unique and it works so well. And let me tell you something. During the day, because it doesn't hold a lot, I can just go out there periodically and fill it and then cork it back and I'm back in the house. Of course, I wash it at least once a day. And you know how I love making hummingbird feeders and upcycling food containers and they love it so much. And the ice cream containers have still been one of their favorites, but you know, they're coming to this immediately. This is brand new to me. And let me tell you something, my mind is already running that I already know the changes and the different ways I'm gonna set them up. This is gonna be fun. If you wanna see more changes and different ways to use these tubings, be sure to put it underneath in the comments and tell me what you're looking for and what do you think and I will read through them because I'm going to make more of these. Of course now I've got four candies. I just ordered more but look how adorable it is hanging there. The hummingbirds love it. They came to it the moment I put it out. Well let's just say I already have got so many different ways of setting this up and I actually think I see a fountain in this too. Hmm, a solar fountain? I think I do see a solar fountain in there. I think this little guy is waiting. Hey, this has got food in here. Why don't you make me a fountain? Isn't that adorable? With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.